Praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to virtual worship with Live Oak Amy Church of Van South Carolina. My name is Pastor Frederick Wilson and I will serve as your virtual worship leader today. Come on in, join the worship celebration. It is time to worship God virtually in spirit and in truth. We are excited and we are anticipating a mighty move of God in our midst on today. So we invite you to join the celebration, receive God's word and expect a blessing from on high. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, we gather as a community of faith to worship and receive a word of instruction and encouragement. Cleanse our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Empower us, correct us, strengthen us, and guide us as a result of the preaching of the word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, bless us indeed and enlarge our territory. In Jesus name, amen.
it is finished. It is sealed. It is done. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory, honor, and praise belong to the Most High God. Put those hands together, Zion. Almighty God, help this young preacher from Neesmith, South Carolina to preach your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God shall say amen. I invite your attention to the reading of the Psalter, Psalm 139, Psalm 139, and as you turn to Psalm 139, I want to thank all of the members of this annual conference, all of my friends who've traveled from afar to support me today. I love you and I appreciate each and every one of you. God bless you. For the brevity of time, I will only read selected passages or selected verses or stanzas from this psalm. Psalm 139, I will read from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. Verse 7, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Verse 13, for it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Verse 19, oh, that you would kill the wicked, O oh God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Those who speak of you maliciously and lift themselves against you for evil. Verse 23, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to preach for just a few moments from this subject, the flexibility of God. The flexibility of God. The flexibility of God. All of us encounter hurdles, hindrances, and battles in life. As people of color, we know what it is for obstacles and giants to come in our lives. For over 300 years, we fought the evil of slavery. Then for another 100 years, we fought the giant of Jim Crow. Today, we are still fighting for social justice and reaffirming that black lives matter. We've had to fight the ugliness of slavery, racial discrimination, economic inequality, poverty, demeaning self-images, psychological put-downs, systematic violence, unjust systems of oppression and educational health and environmental disparities. We also have problems on a personal level. Sometimes we encounter other people whose only goal in life is to make us miserable. Sometimes problems from without come in the form of circumstances Sickness, accidents, misfortune, setbacks, disappointment, trials, and tribulations. 
Sometimes we are wrestling with private demons and personal struggles. Whenever we get one problem solved, another crops up to take its place. We get one problem worked out in our home or with our marriage, and before we can recover, another difficulty appears. We handle one situation on our jobs, and we are hit with another while we are still shaken from the first shook. We handle one crisis in our church, and we are hit with another. It just seems that we have mastered one giant and up pops another to take its place. Problems just keep coming. Though the storms keep on raging in our lives and sometimes it's hard to tell night from day, there is a God who is flexible enough to handle the complexities and the vicissitudes of life. Regardless of satanic attacks, systematic racism, heavy burdens, difficult circumstances, inadequate resources, hostile people, vicious lies, fickle Negroes, and personal failure. God is flexible enough to handle any problem in our lives. Simply, there's nothing too hard for God. God is flexible enough to handle your scandal in Santee, manage your cousin's mess in California, and prevent a catastrophic global disaster all at the same time. King David's Psalm 139 has been called a most excellent psalm by biblical scholars because it gives the reader a glimpse of the wonder and awesome nature of God. It is pure praise at its best, celebrating God's vast knowledge, God's power, and God's presence. It is a psalm of trust and adoration, the personal prayer of the psalmist whose awe of God is splendidly articulated. There are many diverse opinions surrounding the composition of this song. Some scholars suggest that this psalm is an individual lament or an individual thanksgiving song written after the psalmist was accused and then acquitted of the charge of idolatry. Or it was written for the king who was beset by enemies. Or it was a wisdom psalm or a didactic poem. For certainty, the text suggests that the psalmist was faced with a whole lot of drama. A traumatic and difficult situation in his life and turmoil within the nation. The psalmist's emotions range from breathtaking awe of God's power to frustrating anger about his situation to introspection and trust in the living God. All of us can relate. All of us can relate to this roller coaster of life, journeying from mountain highs and valley lows and joyous ecstasy to severe depression. We go from feeling like Pharrell Williams' hit song, Happy, to James Brown's hit song, The Big Payback. Life is a roller coaster of good and bad. However, one cannot be dogmatic about the genre of our text today. Wherever the setting of this text was years ago, it suggests that God is flexible enough to handle any problem or situation in our lives. The theology of this Davidic psalm emerges from reverent devotion, acknowledgement of the divine, the feelings of vengeful anger with enemies, and affirming redemption from God. 
As the analysis of this psalm will show, there are four strophes of six verses each. In poetry, you may wonder, what is a strophe? <laughs> Let me break it down for you. In poetry, because this is a poetic writing, in poetry, a strophe is a group of verses that form a distinct unit within a poem. The strophes within this text are divided into verses 1 through 6. God's omniscience. God knows all about us. Verses 7 through 12, God's omnipresence. God is always with us. Verses 13 through 18, God's omnipresence. God is all powerful. God can do all things for us. And verses 19 through 24, God embraces justice and redemption. The text suggests to us that God is so flexible, that God is wise enough to be aware of the complexity of all of our messy lives, mobile enough to be present when we need God the most, powerful enough to handle all of our problems in one moment and big enough to provide justice and redemption for the oppressed in the fullness of time. God's presence is perpetual and steadfast. God is powerful, personal, and loving. When we think with the mind of God, we can begin to think outside the box and focus on the awesomeness of God within us. Let us quickly review each trophy within this text to show you the flexibility of God in the lives of God's people. First, God knows all about us. God knows all about us. The first trophy within this text is verses 1 through 6. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. Sometimes we don't let people get to know us completely because we are afraid they will discover something about us that they won't like. But God already knows everything about us even to the number of or the lack of hairs on our heads. And God still accepts and loves us. God is with us through every situation, in every dilemma, protecting, loving, and guiding us. God knows and loves us completely. I am reminded of a song by... Tasha Cobbs Leonard, he knows my name. Yes, he knows my name. He knows my name. Yes, he knows my name. Oh, how he walks with me. Yes, oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me that I am his own. You know my name. How many of you know that God knows your name? Oh, how you comfort me. And oh, how you counsel me. And yet it still amazes me that I am your friend. Are you glad that God is your friend when you're facing hell in your life? Or when your back is against the wall? God knows my name. Yes. Secondly, secondly, God is always with us. The second strophe within this text is verses 7 through 12. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Ah, the psalmist is asking God this question. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even your hand shall lead me 
and your right hand shall hold me fast. Again, God's presence is perpetual and steadfast. God is dependable and always available when we need God. In all that we do, think, and say, God is there. God is present in our times of joy and sorrow, our periods of trial and triumph, as well as our moments of laughter and tears. Accessing God is as easy as calling or texting a friend on your cell phone. God's support and nurture are always just a prayer away. And often, even before we ask, God is right there. God is quicker than quick and faster than fast. This is good news because no matter what we do and where we go, we can never be far from God's comforting presence and God's enduring love. God will show up at your house without an invitation. God will sit at your table and dine with you. But the question is, will you recognize God? Will you welcome God? And if so, will you serve God? Thirdly, God can do all things for us. The third strophe within this text is verses 13 through 18. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Ah, the psalmist is reflecting. That God is all powerful. God created all of us in God's image and likeness. We are God's children with a spark of divinity within all of us. God formed every complex detail of our bodies, minds, and spirits. God constantly thinks of us and is concerned with the details of our lives Therefore, we should not worry about anything. We should not fret. Ah, trust God. Believe God. Rest on God's promises. While you are trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. The text reminds us that God is flexible enough to handle any problem in our lives. Your miracle can come from anywhere and at any time. Brothers, although you may have some doubts, your human situation is no match for God's unchanging hand. God can meet you anywhere at any time. God can deliver you from anything and anybody. God will love you regardless of who you are and God will continue to be by your side anyhow, any way, and at any place. You, my brothers, uh, must believe that God's authority can transcend through and over any man-made powers or barriers. God is flexible enough to handle any problems in our lives. Lastly, God embraces justice and redemption. God embraces justice and redemption. The fourth strophe within this text are verses 19 through 24. Let's listen to the feelings of the psalmist. Listen to uh, the, the emotions of David. David switches gears from being reflective to being irate, being angry. Oh, that you would kill the wicked, oh God. 
and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Those who speak of you maliciously and lift themselves up against you for evil. Oh, he's angry. He's angry because folks are trying to kill him. Folks are trying to discredit him. Folks are trying to challenge his anointing. Folks are trying to beat him up in board meetings. Folks are trying to usurp his authority. Folks are trying to tear down his manhood. Folks are trying to do all manner of evil. And he's just upset. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. It's okay to be angry. But in the midst of your angry, you must follow the guidance of the psalmist in the text. He expresses his anger to God. And guess what? God listened. You can express your anger to God. God listened to his frustration and anger. And then the psalmist made a pivot. In the midst of his anger, frustration, he asked God, search me. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thought. See if there's any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. When you find yourself in a pit, look to God and ask God for help. And ask God to search you. Take a look in the mirror. This final portion of the text is a request of David for divine justice against his deadly enemies. God is the God of the oppressed and God will fight for those in need. God is big enough to handle your haters and your enemies. There is a time and a place to fight for, pursue, and obtain justice. Yet, we need to trust God first and follow God's guidance in handling obstacles and adversity in the text, David also asked God to search for sin in his life and to point it out, even to the level of testing his thoughts. Ah, this is exploratory surgery for sin. How are we to recognize sin unless God points it out? Then when God shows us, we can repent and be forgiven. If you ask the Lord to search your heart and your thoughts and to reveal your sin, you will be continuing in God's will and God's way. And God will bless you and enlarge your territory. Many black men feel that our problems, our situations are too unique for God. Sometimes many of us feel that God really can't help us with our problems. But God is big enough to become small enough to handle and to deliver us from our self-defined and unique situation. I'm encouraged by the text, God knows all about us. God is always with us. God can do all things for us. God embraces justice and redemption. God is flexible enough to handle your scandal. God is so flexible that there is one word 
not ascribe to God's ability. And that word is can't. There's no problem God can't solve. There's no sickness God can't heal. There's no yoke God can't destroy. There's no curse God can't break. I wish I had a witness today. There's no burden God can lift. There's no preacher God can't inspire. There's no lay person God can't encourage. There's no church God can't revive. There's no community God can't turn around. There's no hell hold God can't enter. There's no soul God can't save. There's nothing too hard for God. God is high and God is low. God is big and God is small. God is wide and God is narrow. God is flexible. God is able to do whatever we need God to be for us. Why is this so? According to the spiritual, it's because God is so high, you can't get over him. He's so low, you can't get under him. He's so wide, you can't get around him. The theology of this psalm, it says that this is why we needed a savior. Yes, we needed a savior. The lyrics proclaim, you must come in by and through the lamb. The lamb is Jesus. Jesus, he's God's son. He's the anointed one. Christ was God incarnate. Emmanuel, God is with us. God sent Jesus into the world to be a vehicle of reconciliation between God and God's people. He came down to save the world. He came down to forgive sin. He came down because he loves us. He came down through 40 and two generations. He was born in a ghetto of Bethlehem, raised in a hood called Nazareth, hung out with sinners, healed the sick, raised the dead, spoke truth to power, suffered under Pontius Pilate, brutalized by the Roman police, lynched by the Roman state. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was crucified on government property. He died, he died, he died. Yes, he died, he died till the sun refused to shine. He died, yes, he died. And they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up, he got up with all power, all power, giving power, loving power, saving power, liberating power, soul power, ah, power. Oh, power in his hands. I'm talking about Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Is he all right? I don't know about you, but last year at the annual conference, I had COVID. I was in the hospital with COVID. 
but I'm here today healed by God's grace because when I was in the hospital with COVID-19 I couldn't breathe I couldn't move but there's one name I called on there's one name I love to hear it's music to my ears I called Jesus he breaks every chain he breaks every shackle would you call his name I dare you to try calling his name what's his name what's his name what's his name call his name do you need to be healed do you need deliverance do your son does your son need to be saved is there an ailment in your body does your church needs to be revived do you need a revival in your spirit just call just call just call on his name Jesus 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 don't play with me now if you want to shift in the atmosphere if you need the Holy Ghost to shake your life if you need power 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 call his name Jesus Jesus the more I call him the better I feel do you know him have you tried him is he all right say yes say yes say yes say yes Jesus, 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 shift the atmosphere, Jesus, heal me, Jesus, deliver me, Jesus, loose my shackles, Jesus. Ah, yes. Jesus!
Let us receive the benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with all of us today and forever. And the people of God shall say, Amen.